Good morning, Soul Tribe. I would like to give a big, huge, grateful thank you to my Soul Tribe for subscribing and getting me to 1,000 subscribers. The idea for this YouTube channel was conceived back when my Airbnb glamping camp was shut down because I had a hot shower that was draining into a gray water biofiltration system. Um, I'm gonna do a video on that here in the next little bit. The county shut it down because it was a health, safety, and welfare issue. That moment, instead of freaking out, in some ways I felt a sense of relief because that camp seemed to just keep me trapped. I couldn't seem to get away from it. I had to show guests how to use the shower, how to keep the mosquitoes out of their tent. Like, I had to be there. There was always a problem that needed to be solved, and so I didn't really like dealing with that and having to be there to clean it because I really didn't make enough money yet to afford to hire somebody to clean it. So in some ways, it was like, oh my gosh, it was so much work and I just barely broke even, at least in the money that I put into it, not the labor. That was a lot, a lot of labor. I just like said to the universe, I'm just gonna get curious. Okay, universe, what am I gonna do for money now? One of the things that was conceived was to do this YouTube channel. Now that was October 10th, 1010, 2018. Fast forward to now, oh, get this, get this, I love this little, this little nod from the universe. I got my 1,000 subscribers and my 4,000 watch time hours on the summer solstice 2021. My name is Solstice and I thought that was just a really cool, like, okay, yes, you're on the right track, Solstice. So yes, I am now finally at that place where I'm actually monetizing my channel. In some ways, I'm sorry for the commercials, but it's making something possible that I've been desiring for a long time, which is a way to make money while I'm traveling, especially if I go abroad. Like when the pandemic hit, I had these plans back in January to go to Egypt. I was starting to put together an itinerary and then I heard about this virus thing from friends that travel to China all the time. And everything about that trip wasn't really coming together anyway, so I just uh, decided on January 31st to not go on that trip. And I was gonna go March 2nd to March 25th of that, of 2020. Oh, it's interesting because every time I thought about buying the plane ticket, I would like get this overwhelming anxiety that would come over me like, no, don't buy the plane ticket. And I'd be like, what's going on? Are you just feeling kind of nervous about going to Egypt by yourself? I mean, yeah, okay, it's, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking to go to Egypt by yourself. I'm like, but normally I'd be like, come on, just buy the ticket already, Solstice. Feel the fear and do it anyway. I talk to myself, by the way. I didn't buy that ticket. And I'm so glad because if I had gone to Egypt during the lockdown, I would have run out of money. Like, I wouldn't have any way to make income there while I was over there. So, with this YouTube channel, my desire is that now I can travel abroad and make money while I'm abroad. And it just, it just fits everything that I love doing. I love photography. I love nature. It, like, it just kind of like the one kind of job I can do. I'm a multi-potentialite. Partly what took so long to get this channel up was because I couldn't figure out what the channel's about. What's my niche? I'm interested in yoga, meditation, self-help, personal transformation, conscious living, spirituality. Um, I'm interested in travel for sure. Definitely that one. And um, playing the native flute things, designing things, coming up with innovative solutions for projects, health, physical health, eating healthy. So all those things. I'm like, how does that one channel 
I realize, well, the channel's about me. It's a vlog. It's about me and living that lifestyle of all those things that I do. I didn't want to just start the channel and not have it have a direction, like kind of a, a rudder to like steer the course of what the channel's about. That could just be a lot of work of making a lot of videos that's going nowhere. Initially, I just started out with these little five minute videos of like advice. The one that I do really enjoy though is six ways to tap into your imagination or your inner magical child. That was like more kind of advicey, like step by step. And that just still wasn't fully my style. And I realized that like, really, I wanna just do a vlog. I just wanna do like a travel vlog and just show you, show you how to live a healthy lifestyle show you how to like live what I call a retreat lifestyle like I just live in a retreat all the time the thing that you want to just spend several thousand dollars for four days to get away and escape I live like that all the time I'm doing yoga I'm reading self-help books I'm meditating I'm meeting up with awesome friends and connecting I'm doing polar plunges and cacao ceremonies and it just goes on and on. I have endless, endless vlog content because I truly actually live like this where I just relax and do self-care and chill by the pool. I do a lot of swimming because I am a huge water element. I love water. If you haven't figured that out by now. <laughs> so that's what this channel is about. It's how to feel like a kid again. I don't care if you're 18 years old or you're 84 years old. We all want to feel like a kid again. That's really like the answer to life. What the world needs now is more play, more fun, more dancing, more being in the moment, more imagination, more creativity, more time off, less working, less having to adult all the time. We call that adulting, but I really feel like it's not as necessary as we think it is. We're just trapped in a programming of slave wage, is what I call that. And I'm here to show you and demonstrate in my vlog that you don't have to be trapped like that. There are other ways. And families do it. Um, and the best way I found to do it is by simply not having to pay rent. That is the answer, the, main, the really the simplest answer. I'm definitely gonna do a video on how I make money and how I save money um, at some point down the road. Definitely comment if you wanna see those videos. And, but basically that's what it is. The way I can just quit jobs that I don't like anymore is because I don't pay rent. The other thing I'm running into though is feeling like does van life go with yoga and meditation and self-help and self-care and healthy eating and healthy living? I actually would like to know from you, do you know anyone, any other YouTube channel who is doing something where it's van life and then they focus a lot on living more consciously, conscious living is the way I describe it, and healthy meals for the road and spirituality I'm kind of curious about that so if you know of a channel like that because I tried to search for something where it was like van life plus yoga meditation and it didn't really come up a whole lot like there was like some maybe some morning routines of like doing some yoga at, at the van with their van but doing personal transformation work um, if you know another van lifer that is vlogging about that or talking about that I would love to know about it so let me know in the comments who I can uh, check out. I am sure that a lot of you are wondering what happened to the bathtub in my minivan video that was promised in my van tour video, which you can find a link to it up here if you haven't watched it already yet. Well, you know what? I'm kind of burned out. I'm burned out on doing van projects. So I think the whole point of this van life is to be free basically do what you want to do in the moment and that's where I'm trying to live from. I've just been really busy having a lot of fun and having a lot of fun editing these vlog videos 
haven't quite fell up to finishing the bathtub. I did finally buy one of the products that I need to finish it. I need to get one more part. Hopefully in the next few days I'll get to it, but be patient with me. I am going to finish the bathtub. It's just, I haven't been feeling it. I've been just relaxing and resting and kind of restoring myself after a really intense van build. Uh, it was a lot of meltdowns, it was blood, sweat, and tears, literally, that went into it. So I'm not really wanting to get on another van project just yet. So I'm sorry if the vlogs aren't what you signed up for. A bunch of girls laughing in a van isn't what you signed up for. If you were like, no, I want the projects. So I'll give you one project, though, that I'm going to do here in the next little bit. I made a massage room out of my minivan. And I did that last November because my friend Ellen is a massage therapist, so we did a massage room and a massage tray in the back of my minivan. Stay tuned for that video. That one I already have filmed, so I can just put that together here shortly. So I'm giving you something that you've never seen before, probably even in a sprinter van. Who has a massage room in a van? If you know somebody, let me know. The vlogs aren't just about two girls in a van giggling and laughing singing and having all these amazing adventures. There's also, um, you know, just how I make coffee, how I go to the bathroom, where do I shower, where do I stay the night. <laughs> I think it's funny that uh, I consider myself a solo female traveler and yet so far on this journey I have had so many amazing friends that I've met up with that it definitely appears like I'm not going it solo and having to deal with stuff by myself. So I kind of think that's cool, but you know, I'm sure down the road some of these vlogs will be just me hanging out in the woods by myself. I definitely want to have some of my own space and some alone time, but I can't help it. I've got amazing friends to hang out with and other people I want to meet up uh, down the road. So. To be honest, I actually don't follow that many van life videos. I've been doing the van life since like my 20s, which was like 25 years ago. So I've been living in and out of vehicles. Even when I was a kid, my parents, in order to afford to go take the family to Disneyland, we just went in the minivan and just slept in the minivan, a little RV park, all of us. And that's how we could afford to go to Disneyland. We didn't stay at the Disneyland hotel. Like, that was not how we could afford to travel, but my parents didn't say, oh, we're too poor, we can't travel. They made travel a priority, and we did a lot of traveling across the country, just in the back of a pickup truck with a, camp, a cab over, camper on top, and it was, a wild, <laughs> it was a wild ride with a lot of kids in it. But that is how I grew up, so I'm used to like just living, you know, inexpensive, camping, being outdoors, all of that has just been a lifestyle that I've always known. So I haven't really like sought out other van life to know how to do van life, if that makes sense. Even when I did my van design, I didn't even look that much at other minivan designs. I just knew what I wanted. And a lot of times as a designer, you do look at what's kind of a precedent, like what other people have done. But I already had done a lot of building projects with Airbnb and trying to create off-grid uh, experience, like uh, glamping places and things like that. So I already kind of knew about outdoor shower concepts or solar and that kind of stuff. So who are your favorite van life people that you really enjoy watching? I'd love to know about them. I'm going to start doing a Q&A video. So if you can email me at solsticeelliot at gmail.com. So solstice is S-O-L-S-T-I-C-E. Elliot is E-L-L-I-O-T-T. -T, one word, solstice Elliot at gmail.com. If you can email me any questions that you have, I'm happy to put together a video to answer your questions. You can ask me anything from why is my name Solstice to any of my inner spiritual life, how I got to where I am, how I feel like a kid again. And I don't, I didn't naturally just feel like a kid again. I had to learn my way into that and grow into that. So 
I definitely want to share with you some of how I did that. And so if you have questions about that, please ask me. Is so anything about van life or building anything or what ideas or suggestions, I'd be happy to do that. Oh, so I want to tell a little bit of my story. After a rough childhood, and I think pretty much all of us had some kind of rough childhood, some, some worse than mine, some better than mine, but let's just face it. Uh, currently in 3D physical reality, like family life is still rather difficult. I think it's just part of our story, the human story, to have these difficult childhoods. Some of us had amazing childhoods, and then our adulthood was like this rude awakening. That's, I've seen that as well. <laughs> um, I basically came out of childhood feeling emotionally numb. Like, I wasn't happy, and I wasn't sad. I was just like, flatline emotion. That's how I survived childhood, to just let's just put it all down here we can't be two up here and two down here we're just gonna be numb and it helped me that's how I survived it and hopefully my parents won't take offense but um, they're watching this 1994 is when I had my spiritual awakening and when I started to get into some therapy and if you can imagine 1994 without the internet finding therapy good therapy was not an easy process. So you have it a lot easier right now because you have reviews on these therapists. There's all kinds of alternative therapy available to you now. There's all kinds of self-help books way more available. Like you had to go to special bookstores to find these books. Um, that's how it was. So basically from 1994 till now, I have been, and I'm not done. You never get done. I used to think that. I used to think I'm going to arrive finally and all, it's all going to be done. I've never had to do any more healing work like ever again. That's not true. But I did a lot of trauma release work. A lot. Deeply excavating the subconscious thought patterns, the shadow work, the deep negative beliefs that were ruling my life. That were making it so I couldn't create what I wanted to create in my life. That, I feel like, is the most essential way in which I have been able to feel like a kid again. To be able to return to my creative self. To return to the present moment. Because when you're in trauma mode, your body is like super tense all the time. So your eyes get all scraggly and wrinkly and your face. You can actually see trauma in people's eyes. I can. Um, especially when I go on... A dating app and there's like profiles of men and if they don't have their sunglasses on which 50% of them do which I think is like okay dude if you got sunglasses on I can't see you you're hiding something you're out of the the running already if I can see their eyes I just see so much drama in there and man you know if you want to get into a relationship like clear some trauma first before you start relationships they're hard enough as it is it is starting to rain <laughs> So basically, I feel like trauma is the main reason why you age. That's, that's the bottom line. More than face creams and facelifts, I don't do face creams. I have hardly a morning skincare routine. I'm 46 years old. I run around like a little kid. You'll see in my vlogs. I have six episodes out right now. And it's because I've cleared out the trauma. It's not easy work, but it's so, so worth it. And there is so much help out there now to get that trauma cleared out of your system because that's causing your physical pain. That is causing your body to be unhappy, not have any energy. That is causing your depression. It's not a chemical imbalance. It's unhealed trauma. Whether it's from this lifetime or another lifetime. I know I'm getting into past lives and that's probably way too weird for you. I used to think that that was like a little overboard too, but I'm starting to realize that, nope, past lives do have an influence on this current life. And when I healed them, my life moved a lot smoother in this lifetime. So it's, it's fascinating stuff and it's a deep rabbit hole. I'm not going to take you too far down it in this channel, but if you have any questions about it, I would be happy to answer them. Yeah, anyway, so thank you, thank you. Hold on. Let me give you a break.
proper thank you. Thank you, Soul Tribes, for making this possible for me to monetize my channel and to do something I've always dreamed of doing when I was much younger trying to figure out a way to travel and make money. I wanted to be a travel photographer. But back then, you didn't have the internet. You just had to query magazines, and that was rather difficult to get into. And I will say, YouTube is rather difficult to get into. But thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, and let me know in the comments, or email me, like I get said again, solsticeelliot at gmail.com. For any questions that you have about my channel or about me, I am happy to answer them, and I'm so glad that you're part of my tribe. And hope to see you down the road. Thanks, Soul Tribe. Namaste.